uh, Natnagoch will be 10 miles off the coast of my constituency. And at the other end, we will have the Methyl and Burnt Island shipyards. This is important to Fife. It's important to Scotland as well. Now, Andy Kinsella, who was the Chief Executive Officer of Mainstream Renewable Power, who applied for Natnagoch he, for the wind farm permission, he said that the contracts for difference, after they were awarded, we can finally focus on delivering the very significant benefits this project brings to the Scottish economy and its environment. Mainstream had an economic breakdown of the project and estimated 500 jobs will be created in the three-year build phase and at least £550 million of the total project cost will be spent in the Scottish supply chain. The company also anticipated a further £1.8 billion will be spent operating the, and maintaining the array over the projected 25-year lifetime and around 100 roles would be created. They set up the Nartnagoch Coalition, a group of about 60 organisations supporting the development. Alan Duncan, the spokesman for that coalition, said, this means the only major infrastructure project that is ready to build in Scotland next year can now go ahead, creating 2,000 jobs for each year of its four-year construction process, as well as hundreds of long-term permanent jobs. Mainstream then went on and commissioned a Fraser of Allender Institute report, which estimated that NNG would contribute 0.6% of GDP, £827 million, to the Scottish economy over the, pr the project's lifetime, creating thousands of jobs during the construction phase and over 230 operations and maintenance jobs for the 25-year lifetime of the wind farm. The carrots were dangled. Local people were encouraged to speak up. There was adverts in the local and national newspapers. Local politicians like me were put under pressure. We were courted. Ministers were put under considerable pressure to support the NNG scheme. So now is the time for the new owners to deliver for Scotland. The obligation, the promises made by mainstream were inherited by EDF. Deliver now as we were promised. If this does not happen, it will be a huge mistake for EDF, but also for the wider industry, because it will send a message very loud and clear that your promises mean absolutely nothing. EDF are now rumoured to be awarding the contract for constructing the jackets for these huge turbines to Sapien, an Italian industrial giant. They would manufacture the jackets in Indonesia, the other side of the planet. The environmental footprint alone of shipping these massive structures, and they are massive, right way around the world would be significant. This is supposed to be an environmental project. Why on earth are we constructing them this far away and committing so much energy to get them here in the first place? No, certainly. John Mason. Hey, I thank the member for giving way. He, he talks about EDF, and is he relying on their goodwill in all of this, or does he feel that there should be more pressure put on them? It should be a contractual commitment to do these things. Uh, yes, Will I think there any? should be a contractual commitment, and it's a mistake not to have a contractual commitment. It's been seen in other contracts, in other parts of the energy sector. Why on earth it's not being done for this, I simply do not understand. The loss to the local economy would be significant as well. Of course, the yards at Methyl need to be upgraded and investment is required as well. They need to improve efficiency. They need to improve the capacity so they can cope with the demands of this new NNG contract. Change is required to ensure they are ready, not just for this contract, but for other contracts as well in the future. Now, Gary Smith, I think he speaks with great clarity on this issue. Before the latest problem that has occurred, he said this, Promises made by politicians a decade, ago, a decade ago over Scotland's renewable industries will amount to nothing more than a puddle of snake oil. We don't have a Saudi Arabia of renewables, we were promised. And then this is really important. He says the taxpayers pour billions of pounds of subsidies into an industry that lines the pockets of other countries and private financiers instead of redistributing wealth into our own communities. If this happens, if this go ahead, and if this contract goes abroad, 
there will be real anger felt in the communities of Fife. The real disconnect is real. Just in a second. How do we make sure that Scotland does not lose out again? I'll take an intervention. Cabinet Secretary. If investors and developers currently and planning to invest in Scotland are watching and listening to this debate, it would Willie Rennie agree with me that it would be easier, it would make their life easier if they would just invest in Scotland and they wouldn't be getting the berating that they're getting this afternoon? And you're moving into your last minute, Mr Rennie. I think that's right. Um, and I think they should listen very carefully. They should not make bold promises, put adverts in newspapers right across Scotland, encourage the support of ordinary working people in their communities to back their plans, then ship the jobs abroad. They should never, ever do that if they want these contracts in the future. So it's a big lesson for them to learn. That's why we support the Fife Ready for Renewal campaign. The work should be awarded to Fife. It should be awarded to Scotland because that is what we were promised.